Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today I'm gonna take a few minutes and talk a little bit about tapered micrometers. This is something that has come up actually in some comments and discussions and requests that I go into a little bit more in depth on how to use a tapered micrometer. You guys have seen me using these in some of my videos and I have talked about these I think in the past. I don't know that I've ever done a dedicated video on one or not, uh, but I thought it would be good to talk about them. What is a tapered micrometer? When do you use one? How do you use it? And uh, anyway, I have in recent uh, months done several projects in the shop on the lathe that required turning tapers using the taper attachment. And uh, when I start setting up a taper attachment, I start talking about tapers and making measurements to kind of figure out how to do that. Uh, a lot of times I'm on my lathe because I have a digital readout on it, I can kind of use a digital readout to kind of set that taper uh, based off of just the measurements that we're getting over there. And in most cases, the tapers that I've been cutting, they just need to be close. They don't need to be absolutely perfect. They need to be close. But sometimes you do need to get your taper just dead nuts on. And uh, when I do need to do that, usually I will set up, instead of just using the, the uh, digital readout, I'll use that to get it roughly done. But I usually use a uh, gauge to actually indicate off of to make sure that I'm actually at that taper and I've actually done some videos where I've made some of these taper gauges before and we're going to be looking at a few of them here and actually measuring them because we, we got a known uh, taper that we can measure with with the taper micrometer to see how it works. So let's get in here and talk about these. So I've got two tapered micrometers. Uh, they're basically the same basic type of micrometer. One's just a a little bit larger than the other. They're made by the same company. They work on the same principle. They have the same head on them, the same uh, bottom piece on them. The only difference is, is the range of diameters or distances that they will measure. And basically what we're using is a sign bar uh, to measure with. Now, if you do a lot of machining, if you've done a lot of setup work, surface grinding work, setting up angles and stuff, you've probably heard of a sign bar is used for making a very precise angle. Uh, basically, in fact, let me just grab one and I'll show you because it's really the kind of principle of how these work. So let's dig in here. I'm gonna show you an example of setting up a sign bar because it's gonna help us understand the, the taper micrometer. I've got here a sign bar. This sign bar is five inches between the two rolls and these are circular pieces because it has to kind of rotate as you're putting it in there. Now to calculate an angle uh, or to calculate what you need for a particular angle on this uh, sign bar, what we need to do is calculate how high of a stack of gauge blocks we need to put up underneath that to raise it up to a particular angle. So there's a stack of gauge blocks. That's a very precise measurement. We'll go over that in a minute. When we put that up underneath this end now, now we've got an angle that we can very accurately calculate. Now, so here's the challenge. We gotta calculate this stack. And to do that, it's a fairly simple formula. Uh, I've got it right here. You gotta know a couple of things. First, you have to know the length between your rolls. And again, I know this is five inches on this one and you have to know your angle. I've got the angle there designated as theta. So I'm gonna calculate this for a four degree angle, which is just the angle that we're gonna use as an example. This is actually a four degree angle standard that has been ground. So let's, let's solve this problem. So we're, we're solving for H. Uh, we know that our length is five inches and we, need, we know that our angle is four. So, so H equals five times the sine of four. So you can look up in machinery's handbook or something like that, signs if you want to. Or, you know, nowadays we all carry around a phone in our pocket that has a calculator built into it. My phone has my granddaughter's picture on the front of it, by the way. Let's go into our calculator and uh, we'll put it here where we can do this. This is a simple formula. We're going to go five times the sign. I hit the sign button. We put our angle in of four, hit equal, and it calculates that number. And that number is, we're going to need this to the 10,000th of an inch. So it's going to be 0 0.348 and then it's a seven eighths. So we're gonna round that up to eight. 
So uh, 0 0.3488 inches. Now, if you don't want to do it the old fashioned way and calculate it out by hand, you can simply go type in sine bar calculator on your phone, on the internet, and there's a ton of them out there. This happens to be a little machine shop. It's just the first one that came up on my feed. And if you put in your center distance is five, put in the angle of four, hit calculate, it's going to calculate that number for you. And again, it calculates 0 0.3488, the same number we came up with doing it by hand. So to do a four degree angle, I need to get a very precision uh, stack here and I'm gonna be using gauge blocks. So I've got my gauge block set back here that has a bunch of different measurements. These are very precise uh, gauge blocks. Uh, you can measure, create a, a stack down to a 10,000th of an inch in metric. You can do the same type thing. It's different measurements. I'm doing this in inches because that's what I work in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate or we're gonna go out to that last number. And because I've got in my block up here, I've got between um, one, th one ten thousandth up to nine ten thousandths. They actually, it's a, it's a 1.001, 1.002, et cetera, et cetera. I grabbed the eight ten thousandth one. So that's gonna be the first one I do. So we're gonna subtract that from the total. So a zero, I'm gonna write in here what I'm doing. We're gonna, that gauge block was 1.008. So when I subtract that out, you know, the last number becomes zero and I still need 0.2488 or two point, excuse me, 0 0.248 is what I need. Now I have a 48,000, so actually it's a 1.48. So I'm gonna put that in here, minus zero, one point, or 1480. Now we're gonna subtract that out, zero, 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 and I still need a 100,000th. I got a 100,000th one in there. I subtract that out, and we got zeros all the way across. So three gauge blocks here, they add up to that 0 0.3488. And I'm going to put that up underneath this roll here, up underneath that step, and now, this angle on the top of my sign bar should be four degrees. And again, I've got a standard that has been ground and set up here. This is a four degree standard. I'm gonna put it on here and we'll just set that down there. And to prove it out, uh, because I've got four degrees in one direction, four degrees in the other direction, this should be parallel to my surface plate now. So I'm just gonna come in here with an indicator and we're gonna put on here, I'm gonna zero out my indicator. Right, let's zero out this indicator. This is just a half thousandths indicator, but this will be close enough to illustrate what we're showing here. So if I move this across that, that should stay on zero or right there at it. And yeah, it is. So we've shown we're putting that stack in there. We can get a very precise angle. So let's look at our taper micrometer now. So this is a micrometer again used to measure with, but we're not really measuring the distance between the two areas like you would with a normal micrometer. What we're measuring is, is we're measuring on a sign bar. So if you look, this bottom pad has two places of contact in it. And then you got this sign bar across the top. It also has two little points of contact in it. So you got four points. And this is basically emulating the sign bar the concept that we just had. This is your surface plate on the bottom. This is your sign bar. It can move in and out at that angle. But instead of using a stack of gauge blocks to um, put in there to go to a known, we have a micrometer head that we can put in here to actually measure with. So now we're measuring you know, from what would be zero would be parallel coming up and we're measuring what that distance is. On this one, your two rolls are one inch apart rather than five inches on your other sign bar. But uh, this will allow us to put a piece in here and by adjusting the micrometer, we can measure the difference in the height from the zero end 
to the upper end. And then using that same type of assign formulation that we used a while ago, we can calculate what the angle actually is, or we can calculate what it needs to read to be the uh, angle that we want, which is really what we kind of use it for more than measuring a, a taper. Sometimes I do measure taper if I don't know what it is, but usually I'm uh, making a part that needs to be to a certain taper that I know, and I'm using this to see whether we hit it or not. So, all right, let's kind of show you how you read and use this. Shortly after I got my taper micrometer, I had a viewer send me in the mail this little printout here that has some information on, that has some charts in here for standard tapers per inch and what the mic readings need to be and how to calculate and do some other things. It's, this was handy, but I kind of took it to the next step and I kind of made my own chart and I made my own calculator just using Excel. So uh, this chart here has in uh, tapers in inches per inch Typically when we're measuring a taper, what we're looking at is we, we're, we have a, an angle. Let me get something a little bit more drastic that you can see. So there's a taper that we would do, it's similar to an angle, but this is a taper. This taper happens to be one inch per foot. When we're talking about tapers, a lot of times they're measured in you know the rise over the run, uh, inches per inch or inches per foot. So basically what this is saying is, you know, if this was zero, if you came out 12 inches, this high end would be one inch higher, okay? Uh, and that's what this particular standard that I have is ground to, similar to an angle. I don't even know what the angle is, but I do know what the taper is. It's one inch per foot. Uh, you, we can calculate the, the actual angle if we want to, but it's really not important. What is important is that we get the tapers right. So this uh, little cheat sheet has, you know, tapers per inch starting at five thousandths or fifty thousandths and goes up to five hundred thousandths per fifty thousandths interval. I've also got included tapers per foot and inches per foot because that's something I work in a lot. You know, we did the locomotive, which was a one eighth inch per foot taper. A standard taper pin is a quarter inch per foot. So we got the calculations and basically it will tell us what the micrometer needs to read to be at that angle. I've also got in here where I can put in measurements and it'll calculate it out. For example, if I want a three quarter inch taper per foot or per inch or three quarters of an inch per inch, it tells me, okay, you need to read 0.6575 on the micrometer. If I want a 0.125, which is a eighth inch per foot, you know, you need to measure this. I also have it in degrees. So if I have my angle in degrees, like a two degree angle would measure 0.0349 on the, uh, on the micrometer. So I can go in there and type these in. I've also put in my standard tapers for like a Morse taper, a Jacobs taper, Brown and Sharp taper. So if I'm ever having to make those, let's see, I think we got Jarno tapers over here. So if I'm ever having to make these standard tapers, I can just pull this out and they'll tell me what it should read, my micrometer should read um, based on that. So this is just a little cheat sheet. Uh, like I said, I can go to the computer and put in whatever in these boxes over here and it'll calculate it out. So let's, again, give an example. So let's grab a taper. This is a taper, 330 seconds of an inch per foot. This is uh, actually a gauge that I made to set up on my taper attachment. I actually made this and ground it using a sign block in my, or sign, yeah, sign, uh, sign bar on my surface grinder, and I ground it this particular taper. I don't remember why I needed a 330 seconds per inch, but that's what I needed. Uh, so, and actually the included on a taper attachment, it would be twice that, so that would actually be a 3 16ths per inch included angle because you're measuring off the center on a taper attachment for setting it up. This one actually has magnets in the bottom where I can stick it onto a turned piece in my lathe and actually run this up and down to set the taper attachment up. So I can basically, I want my indi indicator to read zero when I do that. I digress a little bit. I tend to do that. So let's, uh, let's measure this. We're going to put this taper in here. Um, this is the small end on this side, the large end on the other, and you can, I'll, we'll show this. You got a little set screw down here on the bottom. This anvil, you can just kind of move in and out. Again, we're not measuring a distance 
we're measuring the difference in the distance between two points. So you just basically slide this in where you want to measure that. You just slide that up on the bottom, tighten your thumb screw. And then we come in here and you, th this is where things get a little bit finicky. Um, what you got to do on this is you got to look at your tension between the top and bottom pads. Right now, let me go ahead and put a little pressure on this. So we're going to come in here. I'm going to put pressure on both of these and you want to have an equal pressure on both the front and the back pads. And then you come over here and you read your micrometer just like you would. This particular uh, taper micrometer has a little rust and damage on it. Which I can still read it. Uh, it's not a big deal. So let's see where we're at. So after playing around with this, I'm going to look down here and we're, I don't know if you guys can see this, between the seven and the eight, this is a 10 thousandths reading uh, indicator. So we come around here and see which line lines up. And it looks like the eight is the closest one. So we're reading um, seven thousandths and eight tenths. So 0 0.0078. I look up on my chart here, 330 seconds. It should read 0 0.00781. We're actually going out to an additional decimal point. I can't read out that far. I only read to the eight. So uh, that standard is set on 330 seconds inch per foot. So I've verified my measurement. Just showing here the two different mics that I have. Again, they're built exactly the same. They basically have the exact same setup in here with the little sign bar. One of them is just for measuring larger diameter pieces than the other one. Uh, these two are the ones that I see come up fairly often, or maybe not fairly often. They're actually kind of rare, uh, but I do see them from time to time. I've never seen one larger than this, although I, I suspect they probably made one that was bigger. Uh, they're just probably not very common. Uh, these are made by the Taper Micrometer Corporation. There you go right there, that's who made them. They are long out of business. I don't think anybody makes anything like this anymore. Uh, so I'm, I'm not aware of any, you know, body like Starrett or Brown and Sharp or Matoyo or anybody else that makes anything like this. But you do still see these come up occasionally for sale and tool sales and on eBay. I will say that the prices on them have gotten kind of crazy. I, when I was making this video, I looked on eBay. There's one of these on there. They want over a thousand dollars for it, which I think is ridiculous. But if you need it, I guess it's worth it. Uh, but just kind of depends on what your needs are, I guess. Um, one thing I will point out real quickly is how to calibrate one of these. It's pretty straightforward. Basically what you want to do is you're just going to push this all the way in until it's making contact there. And you want that up there nice and snug and you want to Ideally, what you would do is take a piece of uh, feeler stock or something that you know is parallel and put in there where you can really feel the, the tension on one side or the other. And you want to just put it in there and, and measure it. And if it's flat, if it's parallel, it should read zero. And uh, I'm not actually going to do it right now. You really need a piece of feeler stock to do it, but that's basically how you do it. You just butt them, butt them together, put a piece, anything just ground parallel in there. Like I said, a piece of feeler stock works really good and uh, you make sure it's reading zero. And as long as it's reading zero and your micrometer is good, you know, you're, you're, you'll make your measurements from there. If you look on here, it shows the patent number, which is 2,746,158. I've actually got that patent right here to a GL uh, Greshman or Gershman tapered micrometer. It was uh, patented in 1954 and uh, you know, the drawing here looks a little bit different, but the, the concept is exactly the same. It's got all the patent information in here. Um, of course, the patent has long since expired. If somebody wanted to come in and copy one of these, they could. They could make a new one. Uh, I imagine there's probably not a huge demand for them, which is probably why they went out of business and why they're no longer available by anybody. 
but they sure are handy if you're measuring tapers. I know somebody is going to ask and want a copy of my Excel spreadsheet that I put together that did all this. So I will, uh, I'll put it up on a, a shared Google page or something, and I'll put a link where you can download this down in the uh, description of the video. I'll try to remember to do that. Sometimes I say I'm going to do it, and then I forget to do it. But uh, if, if, I, if you go down there and there's not one there, you can send me an email and, and I'll straighten it out. But uh, I've got basically in here, I've got my formulas written out on there. Uh, if you want to put your formula into Excel, I've already got all that figured out for both reading. Uh, calculating it for included taper per inch, included taper per foot, and included taper in degrees. Uh, so there's got the formulas in there that will calculate out. And you can just put the numbers in there and it will give you your custom reading right there in the spreadsheet. Very handy. Uh, as long as you got a little spreadsheet, you're good to go. And then, like I said, you can look up common stuff on here. Uh, pretty straightforward as well. I've never seen any catalogs or anything from the Taper Micrometer Corporation that really kind of showed their whole line and what all they had, how many different options they had. That'd be interesting. If anybody's got one of those, I'd, I'd love to to see it just because I'm, I'm interested in these things. I know that when I was out at the Bargy Summer Bash a year ago out in California, somebody had brought in a micrometer made by this company, but it was for measuring internal tapers. And uh, we played around with it. I'll be honest with you, I wasn't, it, it looked like it was kind of not the greatest in the world on, on measuring them, but it, it would work. I think it would have worked a lot better if you could kind of set it to a taper and use it as a gauge to go in there and kind of check a taper more so than measuring something to find out what it is. Uh, but yeah, it, it, was, it, it worked, but again, it just wasn't, wasn't the greatest uh, design I've ever seen. It, it was same concept as this, but a totally different thing. I wish I had a picture of it. I have, that's the only one I've ever seen. I've never even seen a picture of it other than that one I got to hold in my hand. And uh, I would have loved to have bought that just because, I th again, I think it's cool, but he, the owner didn't want to part with it. I don't blame him. I wouldn't have parted with it either. Uh, but anyway, like I said, these are somewhat rare and uncommon. You can find them, uh, but they're not super common. If you can find one at a good deal, they're, they're handy to have if you mess with tapers. I use mine frequently, and I'm glad that I have one of each size. I've used both of these. The smaller one probably gets used more than this bigger one, and the bigger one, basically, it, that's, it's got to be at least that big for it to work. So, you know, this other one kind of fills that range in between the two. Um, and I, like I said, I, I'd be willing to bet they made bigger ones, but I've never seen them. Well, there you go, guys. That video, again, was done on request by several people who just wanted to see a little bit more information on these taper micrometers, how they worked, how you use them. I hope that helps. Uh, again, not very common. You may not be able to find one or you may not be able to afford one if you can find one. Uh, fortunately, I picked mine up at fairly reasonable prices years ago before the prices seemed to have gone through the roof. Uh, but um, sometimes I think when we do these videos, we make the demand go up as well. So the, the, the people who have one for sale, you might want to throw it up on eBay right now because everybody's going to be looking for one. I kind of kid about that, but probably true at the same time. Guys, that's a wrap. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that somebody out there found it useful. Probably know not everybody out there is, but uh, if you are into measuring tapers, these things are sweet. I really like mine. I use it frequently. And with that, we're going to sign off and get out of here. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that subscribe button, please. If you have not, if you watch these, these videos regularly, just go ahead and hit it. It really helps me out. Also, leave comments below. Like button really helps out. And, uh, and also, big thank you to those who support the site financially through Patreon, PayPal, etc. That enables me to take the time to come out here and shoot these videos and bring them to you and share stuff with you. And with that, guys, we are going to sign off. We're going to get out of here. We'll catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching.